Microphone check. Can you hear me now? There he is. <laughs> what up, man? How you doing? How you living, man? I'm golden, man. How you doing, man? All right. I, yeah. I like this shirt, Illmatic. I had to. Oh, another hip hop pen. So I have to go ahead and yeah. play something accordingly. Yeah, man. Uh, the chess yeah. piece. You got you got the Game of Thrones out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, this is only um uh this is at the desk. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. is where I uh, I write stuff down and, and play and play games. So yeah. Heard that. Yeah, absolutely, man. And it, yeah, and it's like work with me because I got my I had to I just took this brace off. I got into some weird accident like last Thursday, man. Like oh shoot. Car, yeah, like head on collision and car got totaled and and um, um, my hand is banged up. I can't work, you know, so it's it's all the above, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, I'll bounce back eventually. Yeah, yeah. So man, uh I met you. Uh well, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, man. It's good to be here, man. I like what you're doing. This is the Kitchen Speakers podcast. And Word. uh I would like to uh introduce everyone to uh is it how do you go? Brent eats food. Yeah, is, that's the that's the moniker. Yeah, that's my email and Instagram because I yeah. my regular name was taken. So I was like, what else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brent eats whatever yeah yeah well i don't know if you want your full government name disclosed so we'll just right for the world so uh man uh <laughs> thank you for uh joining me here it's good to be time out your day i know you're busy man um even though unfortunately you know you said you you just stepped out but uh yeah. i know you you work uh do you work at knife dallas or with and you go open up new locations what's going on yeah that's the idea so i I um I work with John John Teaser like at uh, at Knife, but um, majority of the times I was hanging out with him, working with him. I would work at other places because I don't want to do the same thing over and over all throughout. You know, because mm-hmm. he's about to build a whole empire. So I'm just I took I gave him my word and like you know what I hold you down. But um, right now I'm just working there in the morning, and then I I got a friend of mine. He's gonna open up a restaurant, um, like next month or so. So I'll be doing that, but. But as long as whatever John opens up, I want to be there to help out. You know what I'm saying? So okay. Laguna Beach is next. We just got to do an Orlando, uh, the Ritz Carlton joint. Yo. And uh, that's open. It's a success. It's whatever. So, uh, and that's why I roll with him. I just, whatever he has coming along, I just help him out, like, you know, from parties and dinners to, you know, on the road, you know, whatever. Yeah. I feel it, man. I feel it. I, uh, I did a, a lot of uh, work like that, too. Um, and, um, you know, and I miss doing events, man. So I actually yeah. met you at a, an event, right? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. yeah. Event in, uh, Texas. Yeah. yeah that absolutely. was fun in the hill country. Uh, yeah. That was real, that was real, <laughs> that was real crazy. Cause, um, I didn't know you was going to be there. And then I had, I had met you, I had not met you, but it was like years prior, like three or four years prior to that, you kicked a freestyle or I don't know if it was written or freestyle. You did something. And the more you talk to me, the more I was like, wait a second, hold on. And 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 what you said, I didn't go back and I only saw it at one time. Yeah. But it stuck with me. The, the lyrics you used, it stuck with me. Okay. So the, the, uh, 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 man, the, the shook the, the shook ones joint, or it was like no halfway, no half, no uh, uh I know no such part. thing as halfway cooks. Yeah, and that's, yeah. That, stuck, that stuck with me. And so I didn't I didn't remember what, because actually, actually when I saw it. I don't even remember going back to um, replay it. Like I don't even know how I came across it. So I, it, it like it came and went, but it stuck with me. And I just happened to remember your voice, your face. I was like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I don't know you from somewhere. You told me, <laughs> and then like I, re- I recited that freestyle. I recited the part where you said um, where you ended it. No, have uh, no such thing as halfway cooks. Six hundred on the books or something like uh, that. Yeah, and yeah. I remember that, and I was like, dude, I know you from you know, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you're a hip-hop head and cooking, so I think those two merged together probably resonated with you. Uh, Perfectly, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I did that freestyle. Well, it was, it was written, so I, I can't call it a freestyle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wrote that, and I did that for uh, Chef's Roll back, way back in the day, and uh, it was fun because that's one of the things that kind of got me started doing, like, music and food pairings together. yeah. Uh, way back so that was that was definitely fun and and for you to kind of recite that and bring that up that made my day man 
No, that was, yeah. That was a busy, I, no, no, was I had no reason to say My bad. Say it again. No, I said that was a busy, stressful day. And for you, like, to bring that up, it was, like, refreshing. I was like, oh, cool, man. Thanks. Like, yeah. yeah. So, somebody's listening. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, you was busy. You're quarterbacking a lot of stuff. You were, like, you know, Jeremiah Tower. And that was the headliner. And then Marcus uh, uh, Locker was there. And and a lot of other, like, celebrity, a lot of other hands were there. You know, so yeah. you was. You know, I didn't know what role to play. Yeah, you was everywhere. <laughs> Trying to set yeah, everything was, up and, you know. Was, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, we have a solid team, man. So, uh, really, it was me just kind of help bring the whole goal together. It was, you know, so it was it was nice to be a part of that uh, event because it was a, a success. And, uh, yeah. man, you know, don't don't want to yeah. drop the ball when, when you got a lot. <laughs> A lot of big, no, like you said no, there, no. you know, you just so all those net heads were there. I was like, man, we got to make this fire. Everything needs to be perfect. Yeah, and, and, it, and it was yeah, we had no there was no issues, man. We had all the help we needed. You were very hospitable, so yeah, man, we were yeah. good. And then yeah. I was like, hold on, I know this cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So I got a question for you. So you, I met you in in Texas. You talking about in uh, being Laguna? So. What is some of the places that cooking has brought you into in the U.S. or or the world? Some of the places you've cooked. Um. Okay, so hanging out with John Caesar, he's a living legend, right? So mm-hmm. um, the more he he started getting put on more and get more gigs, and I was the last man standing with him in the kitchen. So hey, you know we had two joints at the Beard House. We done cooked with. Um, I'm not gonna say and just drop names, but we don't cook from the big apple to the pineapple. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like, all right. <laughs> we were, you know, I, we did gigs in Mexico. We, you know, and all because not because of my skill set. Well, I mean, because he trusted me to bring me along with him. So, mm-hmm. um, I've I've learned a lot that way. Like I've learned we'd have all these gigs and no, you know, uh, no uh, meals on wheels and no kid hungry and and from different places that you know we've hosted some stuff. And we and we've been put up and stuff and. And one thing I've learned throughout the years that um, all this traveling and, 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 you know, when you see people on TV, he's like, oh, man, that guy must be really good. He's, he's on TV. Man, this guy was really dope. He has a cookbook. Mm-hmm. Oh, that guy's restaurant. So, oh, my goodness. And I want to go eat at that restaurant. And, he, and you go eat and you travel. And you start realizing, like, wait a second. I think my risotto is better than this guy's. Not, not, not beefing, but we're just yeah, like, yeah. I think my pom parade holds it down, like. You know, I think, um, and especially when we start traveling, I started, I started, uh, the more we travel, the more, I, the food that I prepare, and I'm, I remember one time I'm in Seattle, and I was like, I make this octopus dish, and to look at the, and he took all the credit for it, I don't care, who cares, but, you know, but I make this octopus joint, and, um, and looking at the crowd, and how everyone was like, oh, this is so good, and, and that was a, you know, uh, uplifted for me because it let me know that I'm working with something. So mm-hmm. New York, Miami, all throughout the South, up and down the West Coast, it just let me know, like, when I, when I cook something, for people to come back and get seconds, Yeah, they let me know, that, okay, cool, like, I know what I'm doing to some degree because no matter what state we're in, people seem to like what I do, so. Yeah, yeah respect. That's dope. I, I, I agree with that, you know, man, being from San Diego and, um, you know, L.A. right there and L.A. is a hot spot, uh, respectfully and deserve you, you know, it deserves that that recognition. But going up and staging in L.A., I've, I've staged and in, 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 ate in Seattle, I've Portland, ate up Portland, uh, staged and worked in restaurants in New York. And yeah. like looking around and realizing like, man, like in San Diego, I mean, our food is just as good. I was like, wait, like, why are, how, how come we haven't got this recognition because right. I've worked, I've staged at or ate at all these places and I'm watching sure. the practices and I've tasted the food and I'm like, oh man, like we're on that level too. And I felt good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, oh man, we're, we're onto something in San Diego as well. I was like, okay, okay. You, you know, so Absolutely. I feel that. Absolutely. It's not really about, it's not really about, um, Cause a lot of like a lot of young kids, what we want to do is we get we buy the French Laundry cookbook, and everybody's mindset is like, dude, I need to go to Napa Valley. Dude, hey man, the whole world can't go to Napa Valley. Mm. Somebody's got to hold Wisconsin down. 
somebody's gonna hold Montana down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole yeah. world can't go to Chicago and hang around with the lady. You know, somebody's gonna hold down Arizona, and you know what I'm saying? Like we all can't go to New York. Mm. And then when we start stodging, we start doing our own research. We think that like, okay, it's New York, so their food is better. No. Not at all. Sometimes they miss the mark. Sometimes they forget the salt. I've been to Michigan restaurants before where I totally didn't remember the meal. I just, you know, mm-hmm. 12 courses. And I was like, man, the, the, the guy down the street in Dallas is better than this one. And it's not about being better than whatever, but it's like, yeah. there's a misconception we have. It's, um, okay, we all need to go to Los Angeles because that's where the Michelin cats are at. Or, that, or we need to go to, you know, uh, if I want to step my, my seafood game up, we need to go to Japan. Actually, you cut. Just do the best that you can where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, I mean, it doesn't hurt to go and stage and then come back or and learn a few things and then bring it back, right? Because that's all. Uh, some of the some of the big chefs have, have done and, and opened up. And that's why, like, Austin is blowing up and other other places, you know, in Charlotte. And because, you know, you can go there and, and then bring what you learned, but use what you have in that mm-hmm. area, you know? Yeah. With your with your personality and stuff too, like your yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like there, there's there's heads down here in Dallas, in, in Tennessee, and you know uh, Milwaukee that 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 left went their, their their comfort zone. They moved to Italy. They went to Hong Kong. They went to French laundry and Noma, all this kind of stuff, you know. And then after they got all that learning, and then they came back to their home, and and boom, you know. Yeah, that's that's super dope, man. So. Say you you're about to go to war, right? As yeah. the open service about to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got six hundred covers on the books. Uh, absolutely. And you can only pick two other cooks or chefs, two other people to help you. And so you're about to go to war, war. Like it's, it's absolutely right. Yeah. Who are you picking? It could be anybody in the world. Um, my goodness, man. Um. Okay, so I could easily just say like a celebrity chef here and there, but actually I don't know him like that, so I can't. It has to be someone who I already know that's that's mad funny. I need someone that works hard, don't complain, and it's and it's funny that we'll take like you know a pop up forty top and we laugh it off, mm-hmm. but we get it done. So it'll be um, man, there's a chef that put me on. Um, his name was Adrian Meeks. He doesn't. He doesn't get shook. He's very calm. He's chilling. And he's smart. So it has to be someone. Do you want like somebody like the well known or one of the people that I know? Who you go to war with? Who I go to? Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um, there's. Oh no, I got you. There's a guy named. Uh, his name was Ross Demers. He's one of my best friends, and uh, yeah, he's he's extremely funny. We laugh things off. Mm-hmm. He's a woman magnet to girls. You know, he's already just like you know. Uh, uh, in, in the midst of us cooking, there might be some girls, you know, flirt. It just makes things fun. So if I have like 600 and it's like, you know, and it's like a good straight eight straight hours, like including cleanup and prepping and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like mm. his name was Ross, man. Ross and um, there's another guy I'm sleeping on right now. Um, Paul. Um, um, yeah, and 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 a guy named Adrian Meeks. He's really sous chef guy. He's an artist, extremely smart. Mm. And um, you know, we 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 can talk about hip hop the whole time while we're cooking. Like, you know, we we can cook and then talk about some stuff. We can focus and still have a conversation about other yeah. stuff. So yeah, no, yeah, you got it. You got to get through it too, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't want. I can't be with someone that's complaining. I don't want someone to leave 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 off the line hours on their phone. I don't want that same person to go up into the, to the hostess stand asking about like how many more covers we have, dude. There, they let us know six hundred. Just get ready to be busy. Yeah, yeah. Like pretend we're at IHOP. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we'll close, we'll close at eleven thirty, but just pretend that we, you know, yeah, just, just work. keep pushing, right? Yeah, just keep. Yeah, yeah, man, head down, just have fun and cook. So I got, I got another one for you. If you could steal one restaurant, right? Okay. So you 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 going? Excuse me, chef. Thank you. Uh, or, or owner, thank you. But this my this is my restaurant now. This okay, is my restaurant. You built it for me. Thank you. It's mine now. Which which yeah. restaurant are you stealing? Anyone? All here? right. Oh, uh, that's a tough one. There's there's two of them right now. Okay. One of them was the spot I think you you held down at one point. 
from what I've never been there, these two places I've only seen on TV. So, but Juniper and Ivy, I just like the, I like the way that, I like the vibe in that restaurant. I like where it's located. Mm. I like the, you know what I'm saying? I like the energy. So Juniper and Ivy is one of them. And one that really took it there for me is um, the Catbird Seat in Nashville. Okay. That was, that was okay. So are you familiar at all? Does that sound familiar? No, no, I'm not. Okay. They were one of the first people that had, it was a restaurant with only two chefs. Mm. And it's basically like a, like a 20 seat, you know, counter top of like U shape or whatever. And they, they cook, they pour the, they pour the drinks. They talk to the, they talk to the guests. They, um, you know, it's personable, you know? So mm-hmm. it's like, as they're cooking, I'm pretty sure they're asking like, Hey, how was that? Do you want some more salt? Do you want the, how was that? I mean, you know, and it's really intimate. It's only two, there's no servers and there's no, um, there's no, I think right now, I think they kind of blew up a little bit. So maybe it's like four cooks or something like that. But yeah. originally, I think it was like two, two chefs, a general manager that did their, or, you know, like four people all day type of thing, you know. But I think now they kind of blew up a little bit. But something like that to where it's like mad small, mad intimate, and just, you know, no servers, no, I don't have to worry about cooks stealing and upset about their wages. And it's only yeah. like, it's only like me and you. And we yeah. go to bed together and that's it. That's super dope, man. That's super dope, man. Yeah, I checked for that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this segment is I call Where do you rock in in the kitchen? Um, by default, I, I, I rock the Crocs because they they, they fit my I, I wear like I wear like size 15 wide. And so the average <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then when I wear sneakers. It's I, I order 16s because it's comfortable for my feet. So, but Crocs they build my size. They're consistent, you know. Before before my, uh, Mario Botella got in trouble, I used to rock the orange Crocs on the regular. I used to have like three or four orange Crocs, like yeah. You know, so that that was that was brutal, man. That was hard. I was one of those hard ones to swallow. You know what I mean? When Mario, yeah, I was like, oh, just, man, another one. You know what I'm saying? I was like, dang, man, not not Mario too. But yeah, I feel you on the Crocs, man. Um, uh, so Crocs are like popular right now. Like hip hop artists, like cats are wearing these. And I remember oh, I used okay. to rock them and people would be like, what are those? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, what, how, how did this happen? Do you know? I don't know how it happened. Good question. I, I don't know what started it. I have no idea. I, I know that um, Cokes were rocking them a lot and they just it, they changed it. I don't, I don't know how I leaked it. I, I honestly have no idea. I didn't know there was popping like that. I didn't even know who was rocking them. Huh. Yeah. TikTok made it happen, probably, man. <laughs> probably. <That sounds> about- <laughs> TikTok will get you more viral than the Instagram would. It shits me out. Yeah, yeah. So what is your go-to like cookbook or resource? Like it could be YouTube, it could be the internet somewhere, some little something, but or or do you still re- refer to a specific cookbook? What is your resource? Um, a good, a great go-to, of, of course, French Laundry, but let me, let's, let's move on from French Laundry. Okay. Um, that's like automatic, I feel like, but, um, mm. 11 Madison Park's first cookbook. Okay. I don't have that. Mm, dope. Go Get it. Because, because what they do is there's a lot of honesty in it. So, mm. so what they do is, um, the recipes they give you, it's about, it's, it's tablespoons, it's cups, it's, no, it's nothing grammed out. Mm. They're explaining like real dope techniques. They'll say stuff like, "Hey, you know, for this dessert, we use liquid nitrogen. But if you're at home, and you don't want to use liquid. Uh, if you don't have liquid nitrogen, just put this in a freezer and do this and do that. You know. So they give you alternative recipes. Mm. Um, and that book is super solid in terms of like mad pastry stuff, the minor deeds, hors d'oeuvres, the types of level of precision, and, and it's and it's all straightforward things that you can read it and understand it. It's not a bunch of um, weird pig latin type of stuff like it's straightforward mm-hmm. i mean the other cookbooks now they kind of branched off but their first cookbook is real pretty looks mad tasty it's it's like fundamental um you know um fundamental uh, uh techniques and stuff like that so yeah 11 madison park's first cookbook don't sleep on it heard 11 madison park's first cookbook don't sleep on it so uh <laughs> I call this boiled over, right? Okay. So give me an example of a time 
where you kind of just just lost your lid, man. I've been there, so you know what I mean. <laughs> no judgment, but give me a time when you lost your lid, man. One thing that gets me boiled over. Yeah, there you go. It, yeah. Let, let's do it this way. Yeah. One thing that gets me is um, when people say they want to be a chef, and they, they they say that they love what they do, but while they're at work, always on the phone. Um, they're nowhere to be found. They don't. They're not labeling and dating. Mm. They're not really taking that seriously. So, so what happens is they'll talk all day about the chef, the new chef table that came out, and how they want to start to Germany, and how they want to go to, you know, hang out with all these other heads that they saw, you know, and they bought their cookbook, and they got the new tattoo on their arm with the, you know, there's a knife mm. and all this kind of stuff, and you know, there's like the a, a, a favorite chef that's right there, and there's their, their mom's recipe is. Of cornbread is right here. To like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's that kind of stuff. But then the phone through in the kitchen's not there. So I don't like it when I go to work and people ain't cleaning up after themselves. Because this happened recently. Like, mm. <laughs> let me be careful. Um, but yeah. Super you know, basics. Yeah. 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 It, just that kind of stuff. I, I'm not a big fan of, hey, hey, you know, I get to work at whatever, whatever time I get there and they'll say stuff like, uh, Hey, how many um, how many reservations do we have? And is it going to be busy? And uh, you know, oh man, and dude, don't I thought you went to school for this? I thought you wanted to go stage for this? I thought you, because this is me all day long. I've been doing this since 1999, like full mm. throttle. Mm. So now, and I, I I plan on doing another 20 years. So I literally love to cook. Mm. I love all parts of it: pastry, I'll, I'll wash dishes, I'll prep all day long, I'll work the hottest station on the line, I'll be get buried in kick. I, I love it, but I don't like working with people that don't share the same passion and viewpoint. So recently there was a, a quite a bit of that all at the same time. And there's a lack of care. I get to work and no one, you know, the, the main people wasn't checking their station. We, we ran out of some stuff. No one had a stand up meeting with people. Mm. And, and the, the waiters added a loop, the front of the house added a loop, the management, the chefs, or no one was caring. And so I was like, all right, you know what? I got to go ahead. Hey, either put a two second notice in or a two week notice in. So <laughs> I, I, I ran with the two. I ran with the two weeks, but yeah, it was a long two weeks. Yeah, word, man, word. Uh, so tell me about your uh music, your passion for music. So I started. Um, I've always been into you know music period, but I've always been into hip hop. So when Jam Master J, I heard. Uh, Oh man, it was Run's house. And he was in the way he was scratching, and I never heard they just connected. Like, man, what is that? So I remember getting older. I was like, man, it, I didn't know if it was possible to go buy a turntable. I think you had to be part of a record label, and mm. I didn't think you just go buy turntables, you know. So um in college, a friend of mine, he had turntables and and um he gave me a Funk Master Flex volume two CD, and uh, they kind of got me like amped up and then um um 1999, I started working two kitchen jobs to support my DJ habit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so <laughs> while, I was, while I was cooking, I was thinking about scratching. Mm -hmm. And when I was scratching, I was thinking about cooking. Dope. So, <laughs> so all those things, you know, and then in the kitchen, as you know, man, there's a lot of people, they either be boys or they, 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 uh, they rap, they scratch, they produce. They're artists. You know, I mean, there's musicians. There's, there's garage. I mean, I'm saying there's like all kinds mm -hmm. of. Uh, yeah. I've always been, you know, since then. So now I, I still collect records. I still scratch. I still. Um, I'm building up my equipment too. So and now it's hard to even do anything with my left hand. <laughs> I can't even use my. It's tough. I can't even scratch like I want to. But um, but yeah, man, that that was it. So so between '99 and um, and and today, man, I just um. You know, I would I would get on a turntable before I go to work, get amped up. You know, do some crazy routines and and uh, um, yeah, that's how I don't know. That's, that's how I got started off. Really, you know, I, I love I just love that kind of stuff, man. Going yeah. to work, thinking about hip hop and bumping it on the way to work and mm -hmm. downloading people's Beastie Boys, Mob Deep, MOP, Beat Nuts. I was I was, I was you know that that was part of my hip hop. I mean, that was part of my uh, that's the soundtrack of my cooking career. Huh, dope man. Right there, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I listened to all them cats you you mentioned right now, man. So, uh, definitely, uh, and 
a lot of uh, West Coast hip hop uh, growing up. Well, it was probably considered gangster rap, but um, right. Yeah, man. Uh, same. I think we're from the same era, genre. You know what I mean? Of like uh, right. music. Um, so I definitely even now like prefer to listen to a lot of the '90s hip hop and you know yeah. some sprinkles of uh, 2000s and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I feel it, man. So what I like to end on is uh, one thing that you absolutely want people to know about you. Ooh wee. Okay, well. All right. So so there's more to life than cooking and music. Mm. After you cook your delicious meal and after you I make my dope mixtape, after that, then what? So I believe in God. I believe that God's a very, you know, it's it's I believe in the whole thing. You know, I think the Bible's real. I think the the creation, I like, you know, the talent that he gave me and all that kind of stuff. So um I you know that life is there's more to cooking and there's more to what you after you get to doing you're like you're, you're you're born and then you pass away I and mean, then what you do in the middle so i try to make sure i try to like serve god in between not in one in between but just be a be a be a christian first and then be a chef and a dj next second third you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like i just really think that's what's bad important and uh if we come I'm, I'm i'm very one thing about me is i like to encourage people and if you're doing something that that I, I check for, like with you, I, I don't compliment you all the time because, like, you actually, you're one of the you're one of the people that I, I go to. I go to your uh, your page all the time. It's like, man, that looks dope. Man, that's cool. Oh wow, he did Oreo Oreo pasta. You know, it's like, you know, there's there's um 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 I don't know. There's there's more to I don't know. There's just more more to life than than um you know whatever our hobbies are. You know, so. I'm a huge fan of just encouraging people and building people up and and uh, and, and meaning it. Not just saying stuff like if, if someone, if you like somebody for what they're doing, tell them. Don't wait till they're in the ground. Like mm. you know, people have to wait till like someone's laid up in a hospital and then say stuff like, "Dude, I liked you way before any drama happened." But I think you have to let people know that. So I don't know. I don't. One thing about me too is I don't like. I don't look at the holiday. I don't look at the calendar to determine what to do. Mm. If you have something, give it. Don't wait till December 25th. If you're thankful, don't wait till Thanksgiving. Mm. If you want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that kind of guy. Like, if you want to dress up crazy, don't wait to Halloween. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't let the calendar determine how you need to be, you know, and, and tomorrow's not promise. So if you got something to, something to tell somebody, tell them. Dope, man. That was good, man. Thank you for sharing that. I was I'm uplifted from that, and I do always appreciate when you come through and you do give uh positive uh feedback and you're always uplifting, you know what I mean? And, and I, I see that. And, uh, I, I recognize that. And, uh, that's why I wanted you on, man. And I wanted to have really? a conversation with you. And I think, I think, uh, you know, the people that listen to this and, or watch it, uh, can, uh, uh, you know, take something from it and, cool. you know, and, and, you know, it's not always about being negative, putting that negative energy out there. It's about that positive energy. And if you're positive, you you know, you'll receive positive. I, I believe Absolutely. that. Man. So I appreciate Absolutely. your word and I appreciate your time, man. And, uh, you know, thank you for coming on. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Peace. Time well spent. Hey, thank you, man. See you.